Welcome to Make Your Mark Live. My name is Mark Moyer, and I'm joined today by Steve Johnson. Super thrilled to have him on board. Steve, say hello. Hey, guys. How's it going? And, he, and you're in, where are you? I'm in uh, Minnesota right now. Minnetonka, Minnesota. It's about uh, 25 minutes or so west of the cities. And what's great about having Steve on board today is that he is currently a professional hockey player, <clears throat> and he, like most other um, active athletes are really anxious to get back to their sport and it doesn't matter whether it's hockey, basketball, baseball, uh, the Olympics. There's so many different athletes, student athletes that are really anxious to get back on their field, rink, court, etc. And it's just, um, it's a very uncertain time right now. But what we're going to try to do today is really, by the end of this webinar, by the end of this presentation, you know, you're going to learn how to maximize this downtime, really how to figure out what are some of the things that you can do that can really elevate your game, whether you're stuck indoors or maybe you have a chance to be outdoors doing some exercising, but also not just staying physically fit, but staying mentally fit. And some of the things that you can be doing mentally to keep you sort of sharp and, and on your game. And also best of all, and what we're gonna really focus on today, and Steve, you'll talk about it uh, a bit too, is developing that secondary interest and, and, and you know really solidifying the fact that your identity is not just your yourself as a, as an athlete, you, you're so much more, and really start looking at how you can develop a secondary interest that can really help you when it's time to make that transition, or if you've already made the transition, how you can really run with that as your next career. And you know, another thing that really doesn't get enough thought about or credit about, and I haven't really heard too much about it out there, but for many athletes, but also executives and people that do a lot of traveling, when you travel a lot and you're on the road, a lot of times between the games or between the meetings and so forth, you're in that hotel room. You're sort of stuck in a room. And, you know, you're, you feel sometimes that way, the same way you're doing now, where you're a little bit sort of claustrophobic or stuck. But I think that a lot of people have gotten used to that. And uh, certainly now uh, with what's going on with this uh, shelter in place thing. So anyway, but before we jump into it, Steve, uh, I'd love for all of you that are paying attention and watching this and listening, to consider becoming members of the Win Again Academy. And the Win Again Academy, and, and there's gonna be a lot more about that coming up soon, is really meant to create a community for all athletes, retired, active, student athletes, amateurs, professional, et cetera, to be able to come together and to share a lot of their knowledge, their expertise, and to learn. Uh, to me, what I find is a, a big lack right now is really organized information for athletes. Uh, I know that for example, the NCAA might have some, or the NHL you know, Players Association or NFL, or the different sports may have some resources available. But quite frankly, there's nowhere that's it's all in, in one big space. And so that's what I'm trying to create with uh, the Winnicott Academy. And we'll talk about that now, uh, in a little bit later. But before I keep on going on and on and on, which I'm absolutely doing now, Steve, let's talk a little bit now. Why don't you first tell me a little bit about you know, when you first found out about this sort of shutdown and what was your reaction and your team's reaction? Yeah. So uh, I think it was at the beginning of March when we had a team meeting uh, with uh, our doctors and stuff like that. He came in and kind of gave us a PowerPoint presentation on the coronavirus, what it was, you know, how it affects people, some of the symptoms and things along those lines. And, um, you know, still to this day, I look back and I'm like, okay, it's probably not going to be that big of a deal. And then um, we were actually on the road in Charlotte, North Carolina, and we played, I think it was a Tuesday, Wednesday. So Wednesday night, our last game, I remember we were coming out of the locker room and they had some food out there for us. And uh, our radio guy, uh, Tony Brown came up and uh, told me, he's like, yeah, the NBA just uh, shut down or suspended their season. And he wow. said, I don't think we'll play another game this year. And right there, I was like, holy smokes, like, this is this is happening. And um, let, let alone, I think the next day, we were flying back from Charlotte back to Cleveland. And I think that's when the NHL said, uh, suspended it, obviously, right after the NBA did. Um, kind of like a domino effect, just like many other things yeah. are happening um so yeah it, it was kind of a whirlwind I just remember thinking like okay at, at the beginning it was like you know it's not going to be that big of a deal you know we'll get through this and then 
the NBA went down, then the NHL went down, and um, it's just kind of a domino effect. So it's uh, it was definitely a whirlwind, kind of a crazy time. No one really knew what to think and how to feel, and like obviously these just uncharted uncharted waters, and um, you know it's all new to all of us. So it, it was a weird weird feeling for sure. Wow, and uh, so in a few minutes we're gonna jump into some of the things that that not you know not just you did but maybe some of the things that your team or some you know maybe there was some talk about you know hey focus on this or do that and that sort of thing but before we go on much further i'd love to send out a quick poll because i'm curious to hear what the attendees think about um you know today we're going to be covering a lot of ground and i'd love to know you know what would you like some advice and guidance on today so here's the quick uh, question and i'm going to give you maybe 30 seconds to take a look at those and if you could just uh, Go ahead and throw in, you know, it's multiple. You can pick as many as you'd like. Give you another like 10 seconds or so. This is looking good though. All right. Last chance, two seconds, one-ish, zero. Here we go. Um, so uh, the quick results, what's interesting is that most of you responded, almost all of you responded with how to maximize your free time. And that's um, obviously something that we're all, um, you know, often struggling with. We've, we're suddenly now almost indoors 24-7. So how can we really maximize that? So we'll talk about that. Absolutely. Also, how to establish a daily routine is important to many of you and who you should reach out to and, and sort of how do you expand and grow your network? So that's really, that's really great. Um, there's one more question I'm going to ask you. And, and, and it's basically, how are you spending your time today? All right, this is great. Oh, um, all right, we'll give another 15 seconds or so. All right, here we go. So I'm wrapping it up. Looks like um, the most, most of you, I like this. I look for the positive in what's happening today because look, there's so much negative news and, and, and sort of, um, a lot of gloom and doom and panic out there and that sort of thing. So I'm, I'm really happy to see that. And then it's, uh, you know, it's interesting. And many of you say you speak with at least five people a day. That's absolutely critical. And that's, that's really great because what that's doing is it's your, your sort of um, almost maintaining that human connection. And that's really big. And also, uh, you know, maybe a little over half of you say you have a daily routine and that you try to, and some of you say you exercise every day. So there's a few things to work on. This is, this was really great. So Steve, now I'm going to jump in and say, did the team itself have any guidance for you guys when they said, okay, season's over, or at least it's, uh, you know, whether it's over, or at least postponed for quite a while, but here's some recommendations for what, what you can do while you're at home. Have you, have you gotten some of that from the team itself? Yeah. So, um, we've been in very close contact with the team. Uh, they've done a great job. I'm, I'm pretty sure, you know, every organization is probably doing the same. Um, but uh, I remember we got home and everything was in limbo. No one really knew what was going on. Um, so I think the league and the players association um, were talking back and forth and stuff like that. So in the meantime, we weren't allowed to go to the rink. We weren't allowed to skate. Uh, we weren't even allowed to go to the rink to work out like together. They just wanted everyone um, to stay put and kind of self quarantine. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, which is, which is, good. and then, um, but yeah, so they, we had a strength, we have a strength and conditioning coach and um, 
basically it was, you know, kind of along the terms of, you know, make sure you're getting your rest, make sure you're eating well, and then also try to stay in shape as best as possible. Um, I know you've had a couple other hockey players on and, you know, <clears throat> they can say the same thing. It, it's, it's really tough to stay in shape, um, hockey shape, because, I mean, you could be a great runner, you could be a great swimmer, you could do a lot of things, but once you get on the ice, it's completely different. So um, you just do what you can, and um, whether that's running or jumping and try to do some hockey-specific stuff. And, you know, he sent out a lot of those workouts to us that we can use, and um, – so that, that really helped a lot. And so we were doing that just by ourselves, um, whether it was outside or, you know, I, I guess they started to close the gyms around too. So yep. mainly it was outside or even just in your, you know, bedroom or if you could find a, a little area to use. So um, that's kind of what we've been doing just to try and stay in shape because the season is still technically suspended and, and um, it can definitely come back and no one knows, like I said, so you just try to be ready if that call comes and, and um, try to be, you know, professional about it. And so in every sport, you know, you mentioned, yes, I've had some hockey players on before and every sport has their own, obviously specific exercises to work on, whether it's specific body parts, et cetera. And obviously in hockey, your thighs and your legs are critical aside from, uh, you know, everything else. And, and, um, but then in, in basketball, it'll be different and in football different and so forth. So, um, you know, what are a couple of the things that as a hockey player um, you can do at home that you feel are really good for, um, you know, to keep you sort of in a little bit of that hockey shape? Yeah, I think uh, I think you're right. I think the the whole leg thing is, is huge for hockey. And um, so I think what we've been trying to do a lot is um, doing a lot of plyometrics and jumping and, and uh, kind of sprints and, and stuff along those lines. Um, even just like going outside with a hockey stick and stick handling a ball, try to make sure you're, you know, keeping up on your, your hands and stuff like that while you're out there. So um, just, I think uh, a lot of jumps, a lot of squats, um, and then just a lot of body weight stuff, whether that's push-ups or pull-ups or kind of things along those lines. Like I said, the most gyms are closed and so you kind of have to be a little creative and, um, there's a lot of things online nowadays where you can go into, but in terms of hockey specifics, I would say just a lot of, you know, squats and jumping and, and um, get your heart rate up. And then you can just have fun with it too and stick handle with a ball outside. Um, I still do that to this day for training. So um, even I did that back when I was five years old too. So um, it works. And, and uh, but yeah, just try to be a, you know, a true professional about it. And, and um, you know, you know, your body, just like everyone knows their body. And, and uh, just do whatever you can to make sure um, it's in tip top shape. Good. Now, um, and look, I think we all know that if you have it, if have if you have the opportunity to exercise, you know, it's it's also good for this up here, right? I mean, you're by being physically fit, you tend to exercise your brain as well, and that's really important. But are there now? Do you do any other sort of um, whether it's you know mental exercises whether it's any sort of a yoga or meditation or any um, or breathing or any of that stuff and or have you heard of others that do it yeah so um that's a good question a lot of a lot of guys do um especially nowadays it's that that mental aspect of things um for me what i do is i do a lot of uh first of all you said like working out i think that is kind of my anchor to the day um it kind of grounds me it kind of makes me um, ready to attack whatever else I have during the day. Um, so if I get that sweat in or whatever it may be, it really helps me, um, you know, say, okay, I got the green light. Let's, let's attack today kind of thing. Um, I also do breathing, some breathing exercises, um, just deep breaths and, and, uh, some yoga positions. Um, I know a lot of guys, um, that do yoga, um, just open up your hips, open up your lungs, open up your diaphragm, um, things along those lines. Um, but everyone's a little bit different, but I would say most guys do, um, breathing techniques, um, just to kind of, you know, calm yourself down, calm your nervous system down. Um, and it does go a long way. I really like it. And it's helped me a lot, um, through just the ups and the downs of whether it's the season, whether it's life in general, um, you know, it's, it can be a roller coaster ride sometimes. So it's pretty important to stay level-headed and, um, you know, it's helped me a lot. Oh, that's great. And 
you know, one of the things that I, I used to do all the time, um, and it was just good for my psyche was I would, I would always find a point in the calendar that I was something, it was something that I was really looking forward to, like whether it was a vacation or going to see a concert or, a, you know, a specific, uh, you know, a sporting event or something. And what's really interesting about this, this current situation is that it's sort of wiped the calendar clean, right? I mean, there's, it's really bizarre that there's nothing on the calendar. I mean, what's a couple, a couple of the concerts that I went to, they sent out saying, Oh yeah, we're redoing it in November, but still it's, it's strange that sort of everything's been subtracted from us in that way. But you know what it is, is I think also I'm, I'm hoping anyway, and the way I'm looking at this is when the fog lifts, when everything is sort of dissipating a little bit, I'm going to find some place to go and just have the best time of my life. And I think that that's, something that hopefully, you know, everybody's trying to think about what's happening on the other side and when things really do pivot back. So in your case, Steve, you know, what do you think is, um, I mean, do you have something aside from the season? So if for whatever reason they say, look, you know, we can't really turn it around in time for at least for the AHL and for, for your season, what are some of the things that you have that you would think you'd look forward to going, you know, uh, going forward? Yeah, so I think you're right, too, on that. I mean, I think if this, uh, when this lifts, it's going to be just mayhem. I think everyone's going to be going out and, and uh, doing what they want to be doing. So for me personally, um, you know, obviously I had a couple trips planned, actually, uh, in May and June and even the summer, whether it's bachelor parties or um, just fishing trips and stuff like that. And uh, so those are kind of put on hold right now. But for me, I'm looking forward to just kind of getting back to normal and, and just having that human interaction again. Um, I will probably end up uh, doing a couple of those trips just later uh, in the season, whether it's fishing and uh, a couple hunting trips. Those are come, some of my biggest hobbies. Um, and then also just, um, you know, obviously I'm from Minnesota and, and there's a lot of lakes around here. So um, that's a big, big thing here. Um, so just getting getting the buddies out and, and uh, just kind of hanging on the lake and um, just having some, having some fun. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, I try not to get my hopes up too much because I don't want to get, I don't know how long it'll last. No one really knows, but uh, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens with that. But uh, in the meantime, like I'm just trying to use this time to stay positive and, and uh, I think we'll probably talk about this a little later, but just to try to stay positive and, and use it as a, a time to um, reflect on a dip, like a lot of different things. And, um, you know, cause it, we might not ever have this time ever again. So um, just try to take advantage of it. That's perfect, Steve. And that's, that's a great segue because, you know, one of the things I'm trying to look at is, is what are some of the silver linings that are happening because of this virus? And, you know, one of them is that the increased home time is obviously great if you're with family or friends, whoever, obviously it's a chance to bond more. And as long as, um, you know, everyone's staying mostly sane and mostly uh, civil and all that kind of stuff, it can be great. And then, um, but also it's, it's a great opportunity to learn something new and to, you know, I, I know some people that are trying their hand at learning new language. Uh, others are, you know, picking up an instrument, learning to play guitar or something like that. But you're right, Steve, that we don't know if, you know, if this will happen again, we hope it doesn't ever happen again, but it's interesting that the blessing that's kind of come with it is that it's given us like this giant pause button, like a reset button, like a, you know, everyone, whether you're a professional athlete, just fly every morning. You're like, okay, next day, this is what I'm doing this day. This, you know, everything is boom, 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 boom. Now it's suddenly like, whew, holy shit, nothing's, it's, it's off. But now, you know, I think the first couple of weeks kind of, I mean, a lot of people were kind of, whoa, you know, what do I do? But now that we know that it's going to be at least another sort of four weeks where we're kind of in, at least, who knows, right? It's, I think a lot of people, they're, they're getting smart about this and they're saying, look, I still need to either work or in your case, work out or whatever, you know, start developing and carving out time in your day to have a routine where you know that every morning, you know, you're waking up at a certain time, then you work out maybe a little bit. Then you, you know, you make sure you have some sort of a meal. Then you're, then you know that you're uh, maybe doing a specific, um, you know, maybe you're going online and learning something. Then you're, you know, maybe have a couple phone calls. Maybe you're going on to like LinkedIn and developing uh, and adding your network. 
I mean, there's so many different things you can put into your day now that we never had a chance to do before, right? What, um, tell me a little bit, Steve, if you can, about something that you have now maybe started doing that you hadn't done before or something you want to start doing that you uh, haven't done before. Yeah. Um, so I, for me, like it's been, um, like you said, it's, I've been such a routine where it's like every day you're, you know what you're going to be doing and you're preparing for that. Um, but now it's all out of, out of whack and, and, um, it's super limited right now. Mm -hmm. Um, so for me, um, a couple different things that I've been doing now is, is the first is, is, um, just kind of reconnecting with maybe some friends or, distant family members that I haven't talked to in a while and just kind of catching up with them and, you know, seeing how things are going. Um, another thing is too, is I've been actually just recently trying to figure out how I can help, um, people during this time. For example, the elderly, um, you know, I think are at, probably at most risk for this uh, virus. So how can I help them or even like the doctors and nurses, I, my aunt's actually a nurse and um, I've been thinking about trying to pick up some meals or whatever and drop them off for her and her crew um, and just trying to get creative that way um, with this. Um, another thing too for me is um, I think we might dive into it a little bit farther, but uh, I'm getting my a new rating for my uh, pilot's license and um, that's taken up some time with studying because I have to take a uh, written test with the FAA um, for that. That's why I've been using this time. I mean, it's a pretty good time to study with uh, no distractions, nothing really to do. So um, I've been using this time to try to capitalize on that. And, and uh, so I think it's a mixture of things for me, just with uh, the pilot thing. And then also trying to be creative with um, how can I help during this, the, during this time. And, and, um, and then I think a lot, a lot of people are, you know, trying to, um, recoup maybe some friendships or, or seeing how things are going along those Good. lines and just reconnecting with other people. That's, that's awesome. And, mm -hmm. you know, um, I think you mentioned that the team that your, your team has been asking for you to fly them around to different, uh, cities and games. Is that true? <laughs> no, no, uh, maybe one day, but, uh, We'll see. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine that? Oh my God. You'll be like, Hey guys, check this out. You know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And Throw I can do a loop in this down. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Give them some G force. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That's pretty. Can you imagine? All right, well, anyway. Um, oh, listen, one thing I wanted to mention, by the way, for those of you that are uh, on board here, two separate things. One, a quick announcement, please make sure, uh, I think it's on the bottom of your screen. There's a, there's a button to uh, activate the Q and a, so feel free to, uh, go ahead and ask any questions you'd like of Steve or myself. That's for sure. Number one. And then number two, if you stick to the very end of this uh, thing, when we wrap up two separate things, one, I'll be happy to send you um, all a copy of my book, win again, which I've cleverly put back there in full view, but uh, it's basically a job search book uh, and a, for athletes transitioning out, but it's everything about how to, really learn how to network and how to figure out what you like to do as a secondary interest. We'll talk, we'll talk about that a little bit more and, and uh, really how to really go from the couch to, you know, being in a new uh, spot. So I'm happy to do that. And then I'll also uh, be happy to talk to you all about uh, maybe giving everybody a sort of 15 minutes, half hour coaching call uh, just to help you through uh, anything that's, that you're going through now. So we'll talk about that later, but Steve, tell me now a little bit more about, how did this this whole becoming a pilot thing start? When did you when did you start with that, and and where do you want to take it? Yeah, good question. Um, so for me, uh, my dad is actually a pilot, um, so I've always kind of been a little bit interested in being a pilot. He he's a captain at Delta, and um, so I've been always a little bit interested in it. Um, and when it came to uh, picking a college. Uh, to go. Uh, obviously, I wanted to play hockey. And um, the, when the University of Minnesota came around to offer me a uh, scholarship there, it was kind of tough to turn down because um, I'm from here and, and it's, you know, 25 miles away. I grew up watching them. My dad used to take me to games. Um, so it was, uh, it was tough to turn down. Um, I spoke with a couple other colleges that are, you know, really good in, in the aviation industry. 
such as like University of North Dakota and teams like that. And so I thought about it, but um, at the end of the day, I really wanted to become a Minnesota Gopher. So I decided on that. And then, you know, they have no aviation at the University of Minnesota, uh, Twin Cities. So um, I decided, okay, this is for me, I think we've talked about this before is I'm always trying to think ahead and um, figure out, okay, what's next? What, cause you know what, I'll, I don't care if you're the best athlete in the world, that's going to come to an end one day. And uh, so it's, it's really important and I'm passionate about this too. And this is kind of how we linked up, but I'm really passionate about, uh, you know, trying to utilize all your skills and figure out what you're passionate about and uh, what you like, what your hobbies are and think about, things post hockey for me or post whatever it may be the case um and so that's kind of how I started developing the passion for being a pilot um and then I last summer was the first summer I was like okay let's let's give this thing a go and and try it and see if I like it um and I I loved it I mean right from the get-go um it's 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 more work than I thought (laughs) but uh I I really like it and um you know I'm a type of person that I I don't think I could go into a job where I was sitting in a cubicle all day from nine to five and, you know, watching the clock dwindle down and, you know, stuff like I couldn't do that. Um, that's kind of not how I'm wired. So um, this, this is a, this is a good alternative for sure. And, and I don't know how far I'll take it. You know um, I, I think I could definitely see myself being an, an airline pilot one day. Um, and uh, so hopefully continue to climb the totem pole that way. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's been, it's been a blast so far. It's, it's a lot of fun. Well, I, I do expect to see you flying a blue angels, uh, you know, soon enough, right? That'd be <laughs> yeah. pretty awesome. I'm not going to yeah. listen. We have a, we have a question from, uh, your biggest fan, Stevie J. Um, hockey is obviously a very competitive sport. Furthermore, in my opinion, it's probably the best brotherhood of, of any sport. I missed the beginning, so forgive me if you answer this, but during this time, how are you keeping up with your relationships with your teammates in case the season does come back? And what else are you doing to fulfill that competitive drive? So um, you're right, he did miss the first part of it, but how are you staying in touch with with your teammates? And is there sort of a daily thing, a weekly thing, a, a team-wide thing? What's been going on with that? Yeah, so that's a good question too. We uh, We actually have a team group chat um so we can all say whatever we want in that group chat and uh everyone will get it um so we've been keeping up that's kind of been firing up pretty much i would say you know at least four or five times a week here uh speaking of the group chat one of my teammates actually just had a baby today um yeah he's my defensive partner his name's dylan simpson um so he just had a baby today and so the group chat's been kind of going wild um with that but so, yeah, I mean, guys are, you know, I think the first week or two guys kind of were like um, just trying to um, get away from everything a little bit. And then, um, you know, obviously we're still in limbo, so we don't really know what's going on. So we're, if someone hears something or there's rumors, you know, we'll be putting that in the group chat too. But, uh, you know, it's talked with the coaches a couple times too. But, um, yeah, we, we've been staying in touch uh, quite a bit. And, um, yeah, it, it's, been, it's been fun so far. Got it. So um, when you're on the road and you're 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 traveling between cities and you're you're actually at the city and you've got a game and it's uh, either it's you know before the game or after the game but you're in your hotel room. I mean, I'm assuming you're. Do you usually have a roommate on the in the, in the minors? I mean, you're you're staying with someone, Correct. right? Got it. So yeah. Um, typic. Well, tell me a little bit about typically what you what you do when you're holed up in the hotel room. Yeah, so, I mean, we usually get there the night before the game or whether it's a series, um, but we'll get there the night before, maybe around dinner time. Um, then we'll go out to eat. A lot of the guys, you know, some of the older players will know where to go or some good spots. Um, some guys love to have Italian or pasta before. You know, some guys are different. But So we'll go out to eat. I don't know. There's probably different groups of guys that will go out to eat at certain spots. Um, then just get back and, and kind of, you know, just hang out and, and, um, you know, shut it down at a good time because we have the game the next day. And then, uh, you know, game days are actually pretty busy though. They're pretty structured. You know, we'll, we'll wake up and then we'll go around nine or or probably eight o'clock and then 
we'll go to the rink, have a pregame skate, have our meetings, um, and then have lunch back at the hotel or, or at the rink. And then from there, we'll be able to go back to our hotel room and guys will take a nap for, um, guys are different, but you know, anywhere between an hour or two. And then wake up and, and uh, go to the rink at around 4.30 or 5 o'clock and, and uh, it's game on after that. So um, it's pretty structured in terms of game day. You don't have a lot of time to just uh, do whatever you want. It's, it's pretty structured. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's uh, I mean, in terms of the downtime, there are a lot of downtime, especially like in the minor leagues um, on buses and stuff like that. You're not flying everywhere um, unless it's far, but, um, you know, guys – guys pick up different things. It's, you know, whether it's reading books or, um, you know, uh, there's a lot of games now too that you guys play or just, just playing cards. A lot of guys will play cards with each other. Um, but it's something just to keep your mind busy. And, um, I know it's, especially in the dog days of the season and guys will take naps and stuff like that just to try to recoup some of that energy. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it, it's pretty structured for the most part. What's a, uh, give me a, uh, just real quickly, what's one of the wackiest things you've seen someone do in their free time while, you know, whether you're on a bus or whatever? Oh boy. Uh, I've seen some pretty crazy stuff. I don't know how PG-13 we want to get with that, but uh, I think uh, some of the crazy stuff, boy, God, I, I, I've seen guys sleep in some, some of the craziest positions of all time. I mean, and I mean, they won't wake up either. You could yell in their ear and they won't wake up. It's, it's pretty crazy. I kind of wish I had that trait because I don't have a good time or it's tough for me to sleep um, when I need it. But uh, guys will sleep in the weirdest positions and you, you won't be able to wake them up. Like sometimes guys will go out to, to eat or, you know, we'll get to a station and they'll be still sleeping. You have to wake them up in order to get them off the bus. Um, <laughs> otherwise they'd be there all night. So, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's pretty crazy. Now, um, one of the questions, uh, someone has was, you know, are there, do you have any, um, you know, personal mantras or word of advice or quotes that you kind of live by, or you sort of every day or every morning you say, okay, or you've got maybe post-its hanging on your wall or anything that motivates you that you try to, you know, have yourself. Oh, I think he's got to put another quote. Um, Did you? I don't yeah. have notes or anything like that, but. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I, uh, you don't have any like post-it notes or anything like that that I keep with me, but um, I can just have a, a mindset, I guess, so to speak, where, um, you know, it's, I'm a pretty hard worker. And I think that hard work, I'm a big believer in that hard work will get you anywhere you want to go. Um, okay. As long as you put in the work. And um, I'm pretty disciplined and, and self-motivated. Uh, um, and uh, so every day is, is kind of an opportunity to get better, whether that is hockey or whether that is certain aspects of life. And um, I think, personally, I think that you would be a fool to wake up and, um, you know, not try to seize, seize the day in any way. Um, even if you're not feeling great, or, you know, something's going, something's wrong in your life or something like that. Everybody has problems, no matter who you are. And um, you, you can choose, there's like kind of a two way street. I mean, you can choose to let those things, you know, bug you a lot and get down and be negative and all that stuff. Or you can try to look at the positive in it, in it and um, you know, do whatever you can to uh, accomplish whatever you want to accomplish. And um, so for me, that's kind of like the biggest thing is to just, you know, part, work hard and uh, be positive in, in tough circumstances and um, just grind every day and, and uh, but also have fun with it and uh, know that, you know, you, we're pretty blessed to be to be where we are. That's that's a great answer. So um, one of the things that I, I want to talk about now, I want to jump over to it a little bit is. You know, you reached out to me originally, Steve, uh, a few months ago on, on LinkedIn. I mean, we connected this way. And what's interesting is that I think a lot of athletes don't necessarily, especially your age, I mean, you're in your mid-20s. And, you know, most athletes, uh, really, their focus on, on social media is whether Instagram 
or maybe it's uh, you know it's TikTok now or Snapchat or something. It's not, and they kind of view it like LinkedIn. What do I need LinkedIn for? But I think as some athletes get a little bit older, and especially the ones that retire, they realize well, if they want to succeed, whether it's growing a business or starting a business or working somewhere, they really need to connect with people and really expand their network, right? And it's something that I know you believe in and you've done, Steve, and I think it's uh, really important that you do that because, uh, you know, quite frankly, if you can share that wisdom also with your, your teammates and other people in the league and so on, the more, I mean, you know, what's interesting is Trevor Bauer, pitcher for the Reds, uh, you know, one of the best pitchers in baseball, and he's on LinkedIn, and he's, uh, of all things, I mean, he's probably set for a long time, you know, $100 million contract, that sort of thing. And, but he's on there because he realizes that if he wants to push forward some of the things that he wants to do when he retires, and he's a young guy still, but he knows that he's got to start growing the people of influence to have surrounding him. So, you know, that's why I want to give you credit, Steve, because you, you sort of saw that a while ago and you're trying to and continuing to grow your network. And I want to make sure that we spend this time now to really talk about, you know, how to do that and, and why you should do that. But, but give me a sense of what, what inspired you to do that and, and what have some of your results been? Yeah, it's been great so far. I mean, um, like I mentioned a little bit earlier, I am pretty passionate about um, just inter my other interests, I guess, in life. And, and uh, I, I talked about how I know hockey is going to come to an end at some point, even if, you know, I'm the best player in the NHL, like it's going to come to an end at some point. Right. So um, I'm pretty active in, in, in that, in that regard. Um, and it, it's pretty cool. I mean, uh, for me, like I've been, uh, like he's mentioned on LinkedIn and, and um, over the past couple of years, I've kind of noticed and learned that um, as I grow older, it's, it's important to just take some time and, and um, really, you know, meet people, uh, whether it's virtually or, uh, you know, just grabbing a coffee or whatever it may be, and really understand their situation and because you never really know what could be it um they may know people you may know people and you can form form those relationships which can you know take off and you, you just don't know what can happen and i don't think i think it's very important to not burn any bridges because that can affect you down the road life um pretty negative negatively so i over the last couple of years i've just been trying to be active with um pursuing my interests and uh whether that's um you know me like linkedin wise and connecting with them and uh just try not to burn any bridges because um you know you just never know what what may what relationship could form into what, what it could form i mean heck you could all of a sudden make a big deal and and uh be co-ceos of a company and kill it and and um offered jobs and it, it, you never you just don't you just never know so um i i think that the sky on the limit in, in that regard and, and that's kind of where my interest and in, and um how i kind of developed that mindset that's great you know what i'm going to put you on the spot a little bit i hope you don't mind but uh even if you do mind it's too bad i'm going to show it anyway but i want to share with the screen and show everybody <laughs> your profile and and really show people that and sort of putting you on the spot a little bit but it's I mean, this is really good. The fact that you've got something already set up on here. You talk about how the fact that you're a, a current player, that you graduated student athlete. You, you're obviously active with certain uh, things, um, including, thank you very much for this here. But you mentioned also that you're a private pilot, that you've played, you're a student athlete, intern, et cetera. This is all great, really good. And, uh, you know, this is substantially more than what most people have. And, you know, one of the things that, I mean, yes, I've been doing this a long time, so I'll, I'll probably share, I'll share my screen in a second with, um, you know, my profile. But one of the things that you can do, I believe, Steve, is really also throw in there the fact that you, um, you know, maybe where you might want to um, sort of take things as you go forward. Um, so you mentioned briefly that you're a private pilot down here, but maybe you can mention, you know, that at some point down the road, you'd really be interested in flying commercial commercially or maybe it's something where you want to get involved in agricultural finance um, who knows um, and then a couple other things maybe is just start 
finding out, you can start finding other people that are directly involved in these things. So for example, you could even uh, join some of the groups that are um, tied in with hockey. So for example, just for fun, I'll type in, I don't know, NHL, and then we'll see that there's a, a variety of like NHL network and community group. And you go to that one and you'll see that there's um, 13,000 members, which is, which is pretty, pretty big. And then all you need to do is go in here and let me just go into um, where the heck is it? Um, where I can, where you can search within it and look for others that do, for example, oh, there's a mention of your, your episode here, but um, you can look at all the different members and then you can search them to see how many of them are pilots. For example, I don't know how many of them might be, but well, it might help to spell it right. But, um, And obviously not a lot, but you'll see that you can do all kinds of things. Like for example, look at this person here and just kind of see some of the things that she does. And then you may want to connect, connect with her. Um, another thing you can do up here is obviously put in private pilot and then uh, private pilots professionals group. You can look at them and then, oh, I'm not a member, but you can see there's 13,000 members. And then if you become that request to join it, then you can search within it for all the people that happen to be hockey fans too. <clears throat> then you can start connecting with hockey fans or hockey players that also happen to be private pilots. And for someone like you, this is something that you can actually start connecting with some of those people and they'll be like, hey, listen, if you ever wanna to talk to us about whether it's um, pursuing a different type of airplane or hey, if you're ever in town, I'd love to take you up or whatever it might be, that's a great way to do that sort of thing. And uh, I encourage all of you out there that are, that are watching this, that there's so many different ways to connect with very specific people on LinkedIn that will really just blow your mind. It's, it's really absolutely amazing how you can find people that you never dreamed you'd connect with. You know, one of the things that I do on my profile here is I talk about some of the things that I do directly, transition coach, athletes, and so forth. But then in this about section, I talk about who it is that I really want to be working with and, and speaking with and meeting and, and coaching and so forth. I try to do a lot of stuff here where I, I share a lot of articles and activity and I write my own stuff and really an opportunity to share a lot of the different things that I do and my interests and my um, recommendations and so forth. But the biggest thing to really point out here is just simply that it's so important, I believe, for all of you during this downtime to just start connecting with other people that have sort of shared interests, shared connections, or even uh, fellow alumni. Like in my case, I went to Colgate, so I can go into the, uh, you know, the, the school itself and then look at all the different, and you, you can pick your own school to do this. And alumni, I'll click on alumni. And then in this case here, I mean, it says there's 28,000 alumni on here. That's not a lot because it's a small school, but I might type in private pilot. And then, I can then find all the people and there's 90 that happen to be involved in this sort of thing. Or, you know, certainly type in, I can type in hockey and find out all the people that, that um, the alums and so forth that um, are in, uh, were involved with hockey one way or another or interested in it. So 870. So obviously there's a, a, a ton of ways that you can use this platform. So. I mean, Steve, I, I commend you for, for um, being directly involved with that. And uh, um, whoops, Steve went dark on us, but um, there he is. But I think, Steve, that um, if you can start doing that sort of thing, especially as it ties in with um, the flying and being a pilot and so forth, I think that'd be, you'll benefit quite a bit from that down the road, as will the rest of you. Yeah, sure. Yeah, some of those tabs I, uh... I didn't know you could do that. So I'll be definitely looking into that now. <laughs> That's great. And so look, um, please feel free to jump in with any <laughs> questions for Steve or myself uh, as we continue on here. But one of the other things that I, I guess I wanted to hear you talk about some more is, um, so going forward, because we're sort of uncertain, and you know, we don't really know when there's gonna be any announcements happening. I think every day, all these leagues and all the sports, the teams and so forth, they all get together and they strategize. But, um, you know, at the very least, I mean, are they asking you to be ready to roll within sort of a certain amount of time? Like if they say, all right, in one month, we're going to be 
you know, hopefully clear of some of this stuff and maybe we're playing to empty arenas, maybe not, but what is it that, what can you, I mean, is, are they saying, look, when we get the go ahead, you need to be ready in X amount of time? Yeah. So they've been, uh, each organization, uh, actually the league has been really good with this too. Um, so say, let's say it does happen. We go back. Uh, um, it's like going to be, I believe, it's like a one to two mini training camp, um, basically. So it's going to be going to get, I think, two weeks with the team, kind of get back into hockey shape, uh, kind of get back in the groove a little bit, and uh, then uh, then you'll start playing games after that. Uh, uh, so it allows us to kind of get back into hockey shape, and um, you know, it's we're not going to get thrust in the game because that's when a lot of injuries can happen right and with groins and hip flexors and um stuff like that so they've been doing a job and end up as, uh not <clears throat> not get injured basically if we, if we go back in the game so <laughs> good idea um, yeah it's it's been, if it happens we'll be going back we'll have two weeks of the camp which will be very tough and uh, we'll be uh, playing in after that. Well, Steve, that's that's awesome. Look, I I really appreciate you be, you carving out some time to to share with me and share with all the other uh, attendees here. Um, one of the things that uh, I'd like to do is uh, really number one, hope that you guys get back on the ice as soon as possible. And you know, for baseball players, the same, and all you know, all the sports because that it's something that I think all sports fans really uh, use as a uh, sort of a way to blow off steam or really kind of enjoy life otherwise, right? So I think we're all rooting for that. Um, but second of all, I, look, I, I think that, that you're doing so much to really prepare for what's next whenever that happens. And I, I, the advice you gave today was fantastic. So I really appreciate that. In the chat box, I've just stuck in also a link for people to go to anytime to check out all the upcoming episodes we've got so many great uh, people talking about a variety of things including financial literacy including insurance stuff including you know how to um you know of all things you know just be on the top of your game all the time from a from a, a mental conditioning coach and she's amazing we're going to have the yankees hitting coach on the first female um hired in Major League Baseball to, as a hitting coach, uh, which is, she's incredible. So a lot of great upcoming guests. Tomorrow's is um, Robert Hamilton Owens, and he's a 66-year-old who he completed, Steve, you try this someday, the World Marathon Challenge, which is seven marathons on seven continents in seven days. Wow. Jeez. Hey, that's crazy. Um, yeah. But he's also a former U.S. Air Force uh, pararescue man. This guy's great. You, you really need to check out this episode. So make sure you register for that. That's also tomorrow at uh, 4.30 Eastern. But listen, I really appreciate your time again, Steve. Thanks for being on board. Thanks to everybody else. Remember that um, by sticking to the end, I'm more than happy to send you a copy of Win Again if you'd like. Please, we'll, we'll catch up offline. And then secondly, um, if you want to just have any sort of a conversation, don't don't hesitate to reach out to me. You can find out all my info on markmoyer.com. And uh, Steve, let me know if you'd like to share any of your info with everybody, or if you want them to connect with you on LinkedIn, or how would you like to uh, uh, connect with people? Yeah, so uh, my LinkedIn is, uh, like as you just showed too, is uh, available there. And then um, I think my social media usernames are uh, stevieej 5 is the is a username for that um but yeah no it's been great thank you mark for for having me on and, and uh, i appreciate your time too and, and uh you know i like i talk with you a little bit about listening to listening these to these things and you pick up so many different little little aspects from um, other people and it can go a long ways uh you know you can use that to help you and whatever the case may be so i, I definitely uh uh, advise people to to look into that and and uh, to use this time to try to pick up little details and um, try to better yourself and whatever the case may be because it it can really help. So awesome, well stated, Steve. I appreciate your time again, and we'll uh, we'll certainly be speaking soon. Awesome, sounds good, Mark. I appreciate it. All right, cheers. Okay.